Welcome to this clip explaining the meaning of the terms temporal signatures and vegetation indices as used in remote sensing. In this clip, the concept of temporal signatures will be explained and the meaning and use of vegetation indices in remote sensing will be elucidated. In the clip on spectral signatures, the signatures of different soils and vegetation objects on Earth are explained. Soil showed a gradual increase in reflectance from the visible to the infrared. Vegetation has a low reflectance in the visible, but a very strong reflectance in the near infrared. In contrast, water has quite a low reflectance. In the visible part of the spectrum it is still significant, but in the near infrared and middle infrared part it may be considered zero. If we look at the reflectance as a function of time, we call this the temporal signature. Here we see the temporal signature for three parts of the spectrum for some barley crop in days after sowing the crop. About one month after sowing, the crop emerges. At that moment, the reflectance at a green, red and near infrared wavelength is still almost equal, because the reflectance for bare soil in these bands is almost equal. The crop then starts to grow and produces green biomass until a maximum is reached at about day 100. With increasing amount of biomass, the reflectance in the green and red decrease, with the strongest decrease in the red, because absorption by green pigments there is the strongest. As opposed to that trend, the near infrared reflectance increases with increasing amount of green vegetation. After day 100, the crop starts to mature. The green and particularly red reflectance increase to values comparable to that of bare soil. The near infrared reflectance starts to decrease at the end of the growing season because of this decreasing amount of green biomass. Here we see again an example of the temporal signature of a barley crop but then in a different year. The temporal signature for red and near infrared wavelength is shown. The first day, again, was at emergence of the crop and conditions were dry, yielding a relatively high and equal reflectance in red and near infrared. Then the crop started to grow and red reflectance decreased as expected. However, because the soil at the second date was wet and still contributing a lot to the total reflectance, the near infrared reflectance also decreased, whereas we would expect an increase for increasing biomass. Measurement day 3 was again having dry soil. As a result, the red reflectance increased, although we expected to decrease. The near infrared reflectance increased because of the dry soil conditions and the increase in biomass. Day 4 had again wet conditions, but the soil was mostly covered with green vegetation and the influence of the soil background was only minor. The rest of the temporal signatures was more or less as expected from the previous slide. In the previous slide we observed the strong influence of soil background on the reflectance at individual wavelength, particularly when the soil cover is still low. We are interested in using remote sensing derived information that is less influenced by, for instance, soil background or other disturbing factors. So-called vegetation indices provide dedicated information on vegetation, at the same time minimizing the influence of disturbances by variation in soil background, irradiance, solar position, yellow vegetation or atmospheric attenuation. Such vegetation indices mostly make use of red and near infrared wavelength. So, vegetation indices mostly are simple combinations of two or more spectral bands enhancing the signal coming from vegetation and eliminating variations caused by disturbances. An example is a simple ratio between red and near infrared reflectance. This ratio will be close to 1 for both the wet soil and the dry soil, thus correcting for its variations. Another example is a so-called normalized difference vegetation index, which takes the ratio between the difference of near infrared and red reflectance and the sum of both. Its value will be around zero for both wet and dry soils. Also, a doubling of irradiation still will yield the same value for this index. This makes this one of the most often used vegetation indices in remote sensing applications. Finally, simply the difference between near infrared and red reflectance can be considered an interesting vegetation index. For both wet soil and dry soil, this index yields a value of zero, meaning indeed no vegetation. These graphs illustrate the effect of using a vegetation index. The upper graph shows the temporal signature for the barley crop with varying soil moisture in the beginning of the growing season, as presented earlier in this clip. The bottom graph shows the difference index based on the upper graph. The effect of varying soil moisture has almost completely disappeared. Moreover, the index starts at zero for the first date when there is actually no vegetation yet. Then it increases with increasing green biomass. Towards the end of the growing season it decreases again to a value at the very end 
when all vegetation has matured and is not green anymore. Here we see an example of the yearly change of the normalized difference vegetation index, or the NDVI, at a global scale. Looking at Europe, for instance, we see green tones in summer, meaning high index values and lots of green vegetation. Towards the end of the year, tones get more grayish, with low index values in winter. Then, in spring, Europe starts to green up again, because of increasing amounts of green vegetation. In this clip, you have learned what a temporal signature is, and how variations in soil background can disturb a smooth temporal signature in red and near infrared spectral bands. Subsequently, correction for these disturbances by using so-called vegetation indices is explained, in order to give more accurate information on vegetation itself.